Um, I was very insistent on shooting on location because it was important to me to be specific about the, the place. But it was very difficult. <laughs> so we had four days in Yosemite, and we, it was in the like New Year's, on New Year's Eve, because that was the only, or the two days before New Year's, two days after, the only days that James could fit into his schedule. And it was, we all slept in these like freezing cabins. <laughs> and I sort of questioned what we were doing there at some point. <laughs> Yes. Just a comment that the, the, the tension and the foreboding kept me, kept my consciousness level very high. <laughs> and having once been 10, as I recall, <laughs> there were any number of decision points where those boys could have done something different. And 10 year old boys often think back and would, if I only had that to do over again five minutes ago, I would have done this. I found myself constantly looking at the decision they made and investing of myself and the way things went and the way they could have gone. Yeah, that's interesting because I don't, I think adults think that well, obviously every minute, <laughs> but I don't think kids do. Ten year olds, yeah. 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 Henry put his head on Joe's lap mm -hmm. and immediately Joe told him to move. All through the movie, and I guess we're coming from, I was coming from today's, that I expected an interaction between the two. And I wondered why that was put in. Well, in the short story, it feels pretty clear that the guy is a predator, but I sort of didn't want to tell like, yet another. But the surprising thing about the short story, actually, is the guy seems like a predator, but he also gives Joe a lot of self-confidence and you know helps him in his life. So you know I guess you could think of that as like an early stage of being a predator, but I sort of latched onto that as like, oh well what if this wasn't so clear cut and this guy had questionable thoughts but didn't act on them and was actually, you know, an import a good influence in his kids' life. So that's one answer and then the other answer is I think that Joe maybe thought this wasn't the right thing to do, and he knew it was a weird situation to be in, and kind of putting himself at risk. So he was—he he kind of knew what this was. Um, there was a mountain lion in one of the short stories, and I kind of latched onto that as like an interesting thematic possibility that Palo Alto was this, you know, place bordering nature, but that was spreading and technology driven, and I was like, oh, that's like something that could be an interesting theme in the movie in terms of what's changed since then. And then it slowly in the writing became like a, a thread that would allow me to combine the three stories together. And also this kind of like imaginary, you know, fantasy danger that may not be the actual danger that the kids are actually yeah. facing. I want to create connections between the boys, and that was very important important to me was the idea that they might all be going through sort of private individual suffering but not know that about each other. Like that was sort of this strong memory I had about being 10, that you don't know what other kids are going through, but you act a certain way. Or So I was trying to, I guess, visually build connections between them. Connections. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, hey, fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you.